OK, so we're going to explore how we can use this integral definition of the natural logarithm function to derive the laws of logarithms. And this turns out to be quite a nice little exercise in using integration by substitution. So just to justify very briefly where this definition comes from, you might be familiar with the fact that if you have the integral of 1 over t with respect to t, you're going to get the natural logarithm of the modulus of t plus a constant. And we usually include the modulus here just because if you have the natural logarithm of a negative value, we wouldn't get a real answer here. So we need to have the modulus of this to work out if we had a negative value of t here. And then if we make this into a definite integral between some values, we can go, let's choose this between 1 and x here. And the reason we're choosing 1 is so that when we substitute this in, the natural logarithm of 1 is actually just 0. So when we subtract the natural logarithm of 1, we're just subtracting 0 there. And the natural logarithm of the modulus of x, if we impose that x has to be positive, the modulus of x is just x. We get the natural logarithm of x, and this is true for all values of x greater than 0. And you can check if you're interested. This also works for x between 0 and 1, even if this integral might look a bit funny going from 1 to a smaller value. But this is just the trick where we'd swap the 1 and the x round and introduce a negative sign, and this definition would still work in that case. So let's try and derive our first law of logarithms using this definition. So the first one we're going to be interested in is the fact that if you have the logarithm of a product, we can split this up into a sum. So the logarithm of AB can be rewritten as the log of A plus the log of B. And this should be true for all values of A and B, which are greater than zero. So if we start with the left-hand side, let's start with ln AB using this definition. We can write this as the integral from one up to AB of 1 over t with respect to t. And what we're going to do now is introduce a substitution. But before we get to that, we're actually going to split this up into two separate integrals. So from 1 up to ab, we're actually going to split this into going from 1 to a, and then secondly going from a up to ab. So we'll write this the integral from 1 to a, 1 over t dt, plus the integral from a up to ab of 1 over t dt. So now we're ready to apply a substitution to this second one. This will lead to our log b term. And this first term is just actually equal to the natural logarithm of a following this new definition we're using now, which is really nice. So we get, first of all, we've just got ln a using this definition plus this new integral. So for our substitution here, at the moment we've got t equals a b and we've got t equals a as our two limits. And we want to change this so that at the bottom we've got a 1. So if we introduce a u, which is going to be 1 here, we effectively just need to divide through by a. So we've got t is a, b, so dividing through by a there, we'd get u equals b. So we're going to have this new integral then with respect to u, we're going to go between 1 and b, but let's just write this out a bit more formally. So where we have the 1 over t, let's think about the relationship between t and u. So u is t divided by b, so we'll write this as b times u equals t, and then you can see how the dt is going to change. So an infinitesimal small change in t is going to be the same as b times the infinitesimal small change in u. And similarly, where we have the 1 over t, this becomes a 1 over bu. So we get 1 over bu, and then we replace the dt by a b du, and you see the two b's cancel here, and we've just got the integral from 1 up to b of 1 over u du, which is exactly our definition of the natural logarithm of b. So we get ln a plus ln b, which is exactly what we were trying to prove. And the only other thing you could think about for a bit more depth here is what actually happens if, instead of a being less than a b, what if we went in the scenario where a was bigger than a b, because this seems a bit strange to split our integral up like this. So in the first scenario, if we had, let's draw a picture for each of these. So if a was less than a b, we'd be splitting our integral up into two separate pieces. So first of all, from 1 up to a, and then finally from a up to a b. And this makes sense as an addition here. But if a was greater than a b, so in this case where b is less than 1, if b is between 0 and 1, we'd have our integral, what we're looking for is the integral between 1 and a, b, but then we end up taking the integral from 1 up to a, which is too big, 
and then we need to subtract this integral here from a b up to a. But the fact that we've got plus the integral from a up to a b, this is the same as having minus the integral from a b up to a. So this does indeed work, and you can convince yourself of this geometrically then, that this law of logarithms is going to work using this definition for all values of a and b greater than zero. So now let's do the next law of logarithms, which is that if you have the log of a division like this, you can split this up into log a minus log b for all positive values of a and b. So just like before, let's use our definition with the left-hand side. So we've got ln of a over b is just now defined as the integral from 1 up to a over b of 1 over t dt. And first of all, we're going to do a substitution here. So we've got t is 1, we've got t is a over b, but then we're going to multiply each of these by b. So we're going to get u would go up to b here, and where t is a over b, u would go up to a. So what substitution are we doing? Well, u is just b times t. So we can write this as u over b is equal to t. And this is going to be useful because now 1 over t is going to be b over u, just taking the reciprocal there. So b over u is 1 over t. And when we change our dt here, you can see the small change in t, our dt, is just going to be our small change in u divided by b. So let's actually do this substitution now. So where t is 1, u is going to be b. And where t is a over b, u goes up to a. And then our 1 over t becomes b over u and our dt is replaced by du divided by b. So we've got du divided by b there, and you can see the b's cancel here. So we've just got something that almost looks like our natural logarithm of a, but then it's starting at b rather than starting at 1. But then we can do this trick of splitting this integral up into two separate integrals. So let's rewrite this now as the integral, first of all, from 1 to a of 1 over u du. And then we also need to get rid of all the stuff we don't want between 1 and b. So let's subtract the integral from 1 to b of 1 over u du. So you can see that this integral minus this one would just leave the integral between b and a left over. And you can see this is, just by our definition now, the natural logarithm of a minus the natural logarithm of b. And this will work for all positive values of a and b there that's required. And finally, let's look at this law of logarithms, where if you have the log of x raised to a power of p, for example, then you can take this power of p outside, and we get p times the log of x. And this will work, actually, for any real value of p. p could even be negative here, or 0. So if we start with the left-hand side, just like before, from our new definition, ln x to the p is the integral from 1 up to x to the p of 1 over t dt. We're going to do a substitution now to get this from, instead of having t is 1 going up to t is x to the p, we're going to change this so that we go up from u equals 1 up to u equals just x. So what we're going to have is u is going to be t raised to the power of 1 over p. So u is t to the 1 over p. And you can see this doesn't really work when p is 0, but when p is 0 we just end up with ln 1 is equal to 0, so the identity does hold in that case as well. So if we've got p not equal to 0, though, we've got u equals t to the 1 over p, so we can write du dt is going to be, we multiply by 1 over p, and then we've got t to the 1 over p minus 1. Now if we just do some rearranging here, let's take this p onto the left-hand side, and we'll also take this t to the 1 over p onto the left-hand side, but we'll leave the t to the negative 1 on the right-hand side. So we end up with p times 1 over t to the 1 over p du is equal to, and we take the dt onto the right-hand side, and we've just kept this t to the negative 1 as well, so we get 1 over t dt. I think this is a really nice way of seeing then that 1 over t dt gets replaced by this quantity here. So then ln x raised to the power of p changes to this integral now going from just 1 up to x of we've got p times 1 over t to the 1 over p, remember, is actually just u. So this is literally just 1 over u, and then we've got du here. So you can see this is equal to p times the integral from 1 to x of 1 over u du, but then this is just our standard new definition of the natural logarithm of x. And then this is indeed equal to p times ln x, which is what we're trying to show.